nebula, or to third or fourth dimensional prison held on random planets. A species may interfere with such a species only if it is to counter another advanced species machinations and slash or interference. Only full members of the Space Guard are allowed these rights granted by the galactic law. They are expected to protect any lower species from monsters and invasion. Some seventh dimension beings are exempt to the first law to a degree. When not protecting them, elders are expected to blend into that species society as best they can. Elders may not interfere with any choice a species makes for itself unless there is adequate cause to believe they are being manipulated by another species slash force. Elders are allowed the right to execute any perpetrator of any major law. However if the perpetrator complies with arrest and slash or is brought down peacefully, the elders is expected them to bring them in alive. It is illegal to interfere with conflicts between civilizations native to the same world. Elders have the right to call parley between warring species. Any race that resists their command is treated as an invader. No civilization may war with another and slash or attempt to invade another unless a declaration of war is made by the ruling government of the other civilization. Murder is prohibited, murder being understood as any sentient being killing another unlawfully. Each civilization may deal with such individuals on their own, unless it is between two or more species. In that case a elder is within rights to escort the suspect to the universal courts, if they do not comply the suspect can be terminated on site, which means to be sent to limbo. The unlawful cyberization, turning someone into a cyborg, hosts, food, slaves, free worker, without that individual's consent or own free will is prohibited. This is why when you join secret orders, they ask do you come on your own free will. When in places of law and interspecies business, only minor shape-shifting is allowed. This is defined as shape-shifting that can in no way be used for fraud, hiding, espionage or masking the individual's identity. All beings that are part of an interstellar civilization are granted the right to call for an elder civilization to protect them from invaders, that is unless they themselves are classified as invaders. All beings are expected to obey the laws of the planet they dwell upon unless they are in violation of galactic law. Black hole weapons, sunbeam weapons, extinction level chemical and biological weapons, planet destroying weapons and WMDs of a caliber above nuclear weapons are banned. All forms of possession are banned. Possession being understood as entering, merging, and slash or taking over of another are sentient beings body and slash or mind without their consent. The production or reverse engineering of other people crafts, greys, golems, goons, or workers is prohibited without a written order. Golems, greys, goons, and worker are artificially created beings, from DNA and other creature cells, as opposed to simple robots or android. Slavery between species is prohibited. Slavery of sentient beings is also prohibited. The production of bioweapons is prohibited. Planets with developing civilizations are protected from seeding, colonization and terraforming. These acts and the alteration of a planet's ecosystem and slash or evolution are a violation of the first law. All lower level civilizations are not to be interfered with. Only elders and observers may visit these worlds and only within the regulations of galactic law. Any being that breaks this will be considered an invader and subject to punishment by the nearest elder. Observers are expected to refrain from major interference in a species development. Observers are allowed to decide whether a lower level civilization is mature enough for contact with the galactic community. They can then decide who will precede over this. Sentient slash souls are not to be used as a commodity. The predation of a sentient species by any other sentient species is prohibited. Predation is understood and the hunting and slash or killing of another life form for food, resources, or amusement. Territorial disputes are expected to be resolved between civilizations, if the issue is brought to the Universal Council their say is final. Any attempt to break these agreements will be seen as an act of aggression. The unauthorized manipulation of another species genetics is prohibited. Cross-species breeding is not allowed unless the governments of both species are in agreement. Ignorance of the law will not be treated as an excuse for breaking them for any species. 
The first claim to any mining rights, is by default, the native species. No religion may be established to control a lower species. Species may create their own religious beliefs. Objects slash places of religious value for another species are to be treated with care and preserved. The destruction of these things is unforgiven, if they prove to be endangering to the species that holds them. Attacking and species in full knowledge of their position as upholders of galactic law is prohibited, unless that species has apparently broken the laws themselves. It is prohibited to enter the seventh to ninth dimension unless one is an elder or invited by them. Life forms are not to be sought out nor interfered with, unless in defense of universal civilization. Interference from elder class life forms does not count as a violation of this law. Time travel is forbidden unless the species in question if granted permission by the Universal Council. The use of time travel to ensure a species claim on a territory is considered fraud. Any attempt to change the timeline of a species is forbidden, even one's own is forbidden. Junction points and dead zones are to be avoided at all costs. If you get caught by robbers in these zones you are on your own. Two incarnations of an individual, s, from different times should not meet unless there is a good reason. This would mainly be restricted to combating a threat. In the instance of a universal threat, the laws of time, may be broken and forgiven. No individual may change the Akashic record slash memory of the stars etc. Non-theoretic research into dimensional energy is forbidden. Attempts to break into the great beyond are forbidden. The unlawful attempt to bring back someone, who for all sense and understandings, is the second dead. The destruction of stars, any physical celestial body, is completely prohibited unless the star is artificial. The moving of any natural star is also prohibited with written order. Stars cannot and shall not be moved unless given direct pass from the universal court. Moving a planet back to its proper position slash orbit is excused. Only governments of the native dominant species or ruling civilization may sell a planet. Individuals cannot own a planet, the buying of a planet places it under the secondary ownership of the being's species with the individual being the direct owner. Individuals who do not list their species as owners are considered planet poachers. The species may own the planet as a whole. It is illegal to mine a garden planet, not cleared by the Galactic Council. It is illegal to have experiments on a planet with a lower level civilization. It is illegal to hold experiments on planets owned by another race slash civilization. The seeding of life on garden planets is illegal. Eco-structuring a previously developed and slash or natural garden planet is prohibited. All ships must have a log, tracking number, and a frequency band number to move and operate on the FTL highway in the sixth dimension. The stature of limitations for breaking any law is a hundred years for short-lived species, three hundred for species with fairly long lifespans, one thousand for long-lived species. It is illegal to dump anything in the dark nebula due to the health hazard it creates for surrounding star systems. Animals or pet species placed on the protected list are not to be attacked or preyed upon. If one is somehow forced into a fight with them, lethal force is not allowed. What is an invader? An invader is any species or member of a species that actively partakes in acts of aggression in disregard of the galactic laws. Any species that exempts itself from the mandates of the Universal Council are treated as suspected invaders. What is an observer? An individual commissioned to study the growth and development of a species slash civilization on its steps to space flight. Observers determine whether young planets will be protected from invasion or not. What is a elder or god class life forms? Elder or god class life forms or gods for short, are higher dimensional life forms who exist to balance out the unified field of the universe and ensure our zone's stability. The law of divine oneness is the MVP of the universal laws, in that it's the one upon which all others build. This law states that we are all connected through creation. Every single atom inside of you is connected in some way, shape, or form to the rest of the universe you move through. This means that everything we do has a ripple effect and impacts the collective not just ourselves. To call upon this principle for self-improvement, 
simply remember that your actions both matter and make a difference. The Law of Vibration Everything in the universe has a frequency and a vibration. Nothing ever stands still, as everything is always either being pushed away or pulled towards something. Furthermore, items of a similar vibration are attracted to each other. So, to use this law to manifest your desires, you must match your vibration with that of what you want. Law of correspondence is the premise behind the law of correspondence is that our lives are created by the subconscious patterns we repeat every single day, and these patterns either serve us or hold us back. Activate this law by becoming aware of your own patterns, which are often passed down via familiar ties, and then consciously taking action steps to break them. Law of attraction is the law of vibration in action. Many people get scared by the notion that bad thoughts or low vibrations can somehow destroy their life because they're unaware. The law is not a punishment, but a very clear mirror of our self-worth and mindset. You're surrounded by the outcome of decisions you've made in the past and are fully capable of making other decisions and attracting a different set of circumstances. Law of Inspired Action While the law of attraction is about vibrationally aligning yourself with whatever it is you want, the law of inspired action is about taking you guessed it action in order to bring what you want to fruition. So you can certainly create vision boards, but taking physical steps to move you closer to your vision is much more crucial. Law of Perpetual Transmutation of Energy This law means that even the smallest action can have a profound effect. Like the seed of a mighty tree holds all its promise in its tiny shell, you also have the power within you to move mountains. To put the law into action on a practical level, doing small things every day that uplift you, whether that's singing in the shower, dancing like nobody's watching, or anything else. Remember, small shifts equal major results. Law of cause and effect, the law of cause and effect, also known as the law of karma, states that any action causes a reaction, and that whatever you put out good or bad you get right back. To harness the power of this law, be aware of how your actions and decisions are affecting not just yourself but everyone around you, and focus on sending out good vibes only. Law of Compensation The law of compensation is about reaping what you sow. It instills trust in us that we will be compensated for our work as long as we're open to receiving in all the many ways that the universe can deliver. To be clear, Compensation in this sense isn't limited to employment arrangements or financial compensation. Rather, it's about receiving compensation for all your contributions to the world around you, including the love, joy, and kindness you spread, it is all rewarded. Law of Relativity Nothing and no one is inherently good or bad. Everything is a spectrum of expression, and there is more than one perspective on any situation or challenge. In other words, we are the ones who assign meaning to things, so we can choose to regard things as bad or as happening in our favor. Law of Polarity Everything has a polar opposite, if there's an up, there's a down. If there's light, there's dark. One cannot exist without the other. There is also that which sits in the middle which is neither dark or light. Neither hot or cold. Warm sits in the middle of hot and cold. They say it's always two sides to a story, but there is really always three sides to a story in this three-dimensional world. Experiencing these mirages is part of the human experience, and that they also help us learn from our mistakes and support us in identifying what we don't want so we can get clearer on what we do want. Law of Perpetual Motion The law of perpetual motion tells us that everything is forever changing and our job is to embrace the ride. If life is tough and challenging, know that it will change. If everything is peachy, then savor the moment, but don't try to make it last beyond the natural order of things. Each stage of life has tremendous gifts to offer. The Law of Giving and Receiving The energies of giving and receiving operate within all of us, and in order to read flow, they need to be in balance. To work with this law is to recognize where in your life the balance between giving and receiving is off. You have to allow both sides in you to have their say and get their way. The law of balance is an important spiritual law that teaches us the importance of balance and how to achieve it in our lives. What is the law of balance? 
the law teaches us how to achieve this balance so that our lives are aligned to what the Supreme Almighty has designed for us.